You know, a new study reveals internet usage's effect on a teen's brain. It includes neuroimaging showing disrupted signals between brain regions that are important for controlling attention and working memory. The findings are similar to a study by a University of Michigan professor who says understanding the internet's impact on your brain is an important first step towards battling potential addiction. If you know what the markers of vulnerability are, you can prevent an individual um, by intervening in the interim, you can prevent an individual from developing the full-blown addiction syndrome. The Senate is working toward passing two bipartisan bills aimed at protecting kids online. One focuses on improving privacy. The second requires social media companies to provide better protections for minors. And that includes giving guardians more control and limiting certain features like autoplay. This week, a White House task force recommended parents keep open communication with kids about social media, set expectations for what kids can watch and how long they can use devices, and really make sure they have the correct privacy settings on as well. We've got our crew in this morning um, to talk about this. And I'll be honest, I feel really um, badly for a lot of these younger generations who have been essentially the guinea pigs as we're just now understanding the detriment that it's having on younger generations' brains and, and psyches and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we've talked a lot about this in our digital parenting series, and there's a lot of research out there about just what having the world at your fingertips mm -hmm. can do for you. It's an amazing tool in a lot of ways, but also can have those detriments of, you know, kind of short wiring your brain, that dopamine connection of having everything right there when you want it. Uh, I know for us, we do try to limit our kids' screen time, but I kind of have a canary in the coal mine for us, which is, when they're not on screens, what are they doing? Are they creative? There are they go. going outside? Mm -hmm. Are they playing together? And our kids, thankfully, are doing that. But you see the creep when you have the screens around. Uh, mm -hmm. The good thing is, though, I've heard experts talk about neuroplasticity, that you can still rewire your brain if you've gotten it's wired It's hard, hard to do, though. That's easier so said than done. It, yeah. It's not the end of the world, but you want to watch it. Yeah. And I know it's something. We have those discussions when our daughter was small, and, and we could limit the uh, exposure. We mm -hmm. had the, the parental controls, or we could turn it off if we wanted to. But she's 18 now, so we don't have those, you know, we don't mm -hmm. have that... Uh, uh, can't do that anymore so we still have those conversations but again I think it's very important when they are when they're not on the screen time to, to get out do stuff be active and that's mm -hmm. something that we emphasize too when she was a lot smaller so Oof. okay yeah. our poll right now um, screen time do you limit it 40 percent say mm -hmm. yes 60 percent say no mm, interesting. Well, like Mark said it's it's probably hard you know, making sure because you if they're not doing that, you have to or you have to watch them all the time to make sure they don't get back on it. Or I, yeah. I don't know. I just have a dog. I don't have to worry about <laughs> <the> screen time. <laughs> Is your dog glued to the screen all the time? She does watch TV sometimes. Yeah, all right.